Hello and welcome to a web edition of Q's Countdown, basketball edition for you this evening alongside Adam Unger and Matt Weasel there. I'm Nick Dugan. Guys, the Orange able to take home their first game of the 2016-2017 season over Colgate. Which newcomer for the Orange impressed most in the season opener? Give me the Nebraska transfer, Andrew White. I expected him to play small forward coming into the season, ended up moving to shooting guard. He surprised me. He had great chemistry with Franklin Howard at the top of that 2-3 zone, and offensively he provided a spark both from outside of the arc and in the paint. Expect big things from Andrew White this coming season. My player that impressed me, the freshman, Torian Thompson. Not Ty as bad necessarily. I thought he had an okay game. But Torian Thompson, really good on the defensive side, working with Pascal Chukwu. Only three points, but able to spread out the offense for the Orange and really give them a presence down low with some rebounds. Very good game for him and a very good sign moving forward. A lot of positives for this Orange team on Friday. Let's see exactly how they were able to do that. Big win for them, 83-55. to And Tyler Roberson, a senior on this Syracuse team, 18 points and four rebounds. He had himself a big night. Huge night for him. We saw flashes of that greatness last season down the stretch, even though he ended up in Jim Beheim's doghouse at certain points of the season. However, senior year, it's going to be big for him going forward. Expect a lot more consistency from Roberson. And one of the really good things for Roberson was working with the new starting point guard, Frank Howard. The first two baskets of the SU season, Frank Howard to Tyler Roberson. If that connection continues, expect great things for the Orange front line moving forward. We can't forget about Andrew White. A cool 17 points and five boards for him. We were able to catch up with him to hear what he had to say on the dual point guard system with John Gillen and Frank Howard. Yeah, they're like night and day. Uh, obviously, when we start the game with Frank, I think he's very well paced. I think he does a good job kind of quarterbacking our offense, getting everybody involved. And then John comes in, and he's up the court like a blur. So I think it's good to have two point guards with two different skill sets because given the situation of the game, you have guys that can kind of come in and address whatever needs you might have. Like night and day, Andrew White says, they may be opposites, but both put up very big numbers for the Orange and John Gillen in his debut. Frank Howard, as we mentioned, freshman last year. But look, double-digit points for both of them, strong field goal percentage. What did you guys see out there from them on Friday night? My favorite thing that I saw was really just John Gillen. A lot more pressure to the, mid, uh, to the middle of the key. And Andrew White mentioned that, that it's a lot more high, uh, high pressure, a lot faster with him. Whereas Frank Howard, more passing, able to get the ball around, I think a, lot, a little bit more effectively, and the outside shot, which he developed over the summer. You know, I agree with you. Howard is much more of a distributor offensively, but defensively, I think Gillen looked a little uncomfortable. Howard's already had a year of seasoning in the 2-3 zone, so defensively, he's better. We see it right there. Four steals compared to Gillen's one. However, both of them were very effective in their Orange debut this season. So Gillen, his first year in an Orange uniform, but Frank Howard, as you mentioned, a sophomore under Jim Beheim last year. But what have we seen just early in this season that already makes him better fit to run the point than he did last season? Howard is much bigger and stronger than last season, which normally would negatively affect a basketball player's jump shot. However, that, he improved his jump shot tremendously. So offensively, he's a much more diverse threat. He's also had a year of seasoning under Jim Beheim. Frank Howard is going to lead the Orange. I think if he continues to grow throughout the season as he did this past offseason, he could be a top 10 point guard by season's end in the country. I think you saw a little flashes of Michael Benige from Frank Howard, able to get the three-point shot down, but also able to get steals, play very good defense, able to get the ball around, nine assists for Frank Howard. Those were the things that mainly impressed me because anyone, any good player can score, but it's being able to distribute and help your teammates out. That's what Frank Howard was able to do very effectively. That's why he was a very effective point guard in this past game. And I think if that continues the rest of the season, again, great things for the Orange moving forward. And he was able to help out a lot of teammates on Friday night as Jim Beheim playing a nine-man rotation after playing just about six, maybe seven last year. But guys, does Jim Beheim stick to the nine-man rotation, or does someone see significantly less minutes come March? I think that one player that could see significantly less minutes is Pascal Chukwu, the tallest player on the Syracuse roster. However, he didn't look very comfortable yesterday in the zone. He didn't look very comfortable at all, really, throughout the entire game. And without Torian Thompson helping him with some of the defense, he didn't look like he really belonged. He needs to get a little bit stronger still. And that's what happens with a seven-foot-three guy. You need, to get, you need to have a lot of muscle, and he doesn't have that right now. If he develops that throughout the season, he can get back in the rotation. But I think right now, he needs to just get a little bit stronger to help out the middle of that zone. I disagree with you. You already mentioned my first man out earlier in the show. I've got Torian Thompson. He's a freshman. He hasn't learned the 2-3 zone yet. 
He looked a little uncomfortable in the defensive end of the floor out on the wing at such a great height of 6'10". He belongs in the center of that zone, but between Coleman and Chukwu, he might not find minutes there. I don't know where he exactly fits this season for the Orange. He was able to get some boards, though, and I really do think he had some impressive defensive performances. And if they put Lyon in the middle, Toreen Thompson, he could be that big guy on the outside of the zone, maybe just block some three-pointers. Who knows? Back, throw back to 2003. Big three-pointers blocked? Who knows? Maybe Torian Thompson does it this year. You guys mentioned the 2-3 zone, a staple of the Syracuse defense under Jim Beheim, but he's shown us a little bit, he's some wrinkles in the preseason and in the first game of the season, playing some man in the preseason and then playing the press, heavy press for some of the game against Colgate, but he was none too pleased with it. Does Jim Beheim have success if he sticks with it, even against this ace tough ACC slate? The beauty of the exhibition games and the cupcake schedule at the beginning of the season is that Jim Beheim has the time to experiment with these things. I think the full court press in the 2-3 zone can work very, very well. We've seen that with the women's team last season on their Final 4-1. But what makes run, excuse me, but what makes the difference for this team is the depth. When you can have four fresh legs out there at any given time, if we continue with that nine-man rotation, you're going to see Syracuse start to run the full court press because they'll have the legs to do it, not necessarily the stamina for any given player. However, the stamina as a team due to the depth. Well, one of the reasons they were able to be so effective with that press against Virginia was Virginia was one of the slowest offenses in the country last season. So when you're running against a slow offense, when you have to speed them up with the press, that really disrupts the way that they function. However, with the woman, the reason that they are able to be so successful is they are able to run every single day. At the end of games, they're not tired. It's not even depth their starting lineup can still be uh, very effective at the end of the game using the press. I don't think that Syracuse men have that in them right now. They're a 2-3 team. They have a very good defense in that 2-3 zone. There's no reason to really switch it and be super creative when you have the ability to be that effective and win games with that 2-3 zone. We've seen Jim Beheim doing his entire career. No reason to change things now. All right, guys. So moving on now to the Orange's opponent, on Tuesday night, and that is Holy Cross. Holy Cross out of the Patriot League. Last season, you might remember, entered the tournament at 14 and 19, running all the way through the Patriot League, winning that automatic bid. Guys, they lost to South Carolina earlier this season. I gotta know, what are your keys for the Orange's success for this game on Tuesday? My key to the game is Tyler Lydon. Tyler Lydon only put up two points against Colgate, for crying out loud. He is the Orange's most seasoned returning scorer this season, not counting graduate transfers, not counting hyped up incoming freshmen. Tyler Lydon needs to be in a much more pivotal, much larger scoring role for this team. Previously, when he has disappeared for stretches, the Orange have lost, including Mike Hopkins' uh, tenure as head coach, along with a couple key conference games as well once Jim Beheim returned. Lydon needs to step up now so that he can continue to do so late in the season. Well, one reason that he was able to do that was there wasn't a lot of options. Mine is finding the right combinations for the Orange because right now you have a nine-man rotation. That's a lot of people to get around to, and they need to figure out who to mix and match together in order to be successful. Could it be Tyler Lydon with Pascal Chukwu? Could it be Fred Coward and John Gillen playing together? Probably not, but it's to, you have time now with what you said, a cupcake schedule to figure out who's going to work the best together in order to be successful when you get to these tough games. They have South Carolina in, uh, in just, a few, uh, just a week, a week or two, sorry. They need to be ready for that game because that's when this uh, season really starts to get tough. All right, fellas. So now when it's all said and done, who comes out of the Carrier Dome on Tuesday with a W? You said Syracuse had a cupcake schedule, so I'd have to take Syracuse. 87-54, to 54, and really the team just isn't that good that they're playing. Holy Cross, they lost by over 40 points to South Carolina the other day. And Syracuse, they just have too much talent. In the end, talent wins games. So they might not have it all figured out yet, but they will and they won't have much of a problem. I agree with you. I think it's going to be a little bit closer of a score. I'm going 75-58 orange. I'm not necessarily sure if the walk-ons will be able to get in, but I agree with you. This will still be an experimental, an experimental game Excuse me for Jim Beheim and his crew. Syracuse should have no problem beating Holy Cross. All right, so all orange in the dome on Tuesday night. That's all the time we have here in the Citrus TV studios. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Citrus TV Sports and online at www.citrustv.com. For Adam Unger, Adam Unger, Matt Weasel there. I'm Nick Dugan. Have a great night.